This is the frequency response of the Radio Shack Disco Scanner antenna. Um, I have the antenna mounted behind me, hanging from the ceiling to kind of isolate it. It's uh, connected to a small coaxial jumper. Um, you're supposed to measure these antennas outside, but I wanted to keep all the feed line losses as small as possible, and I didn't want to bring all my equipment outside, so um, the setup does work, but it could uh, alter the uh, response a little bit. I have a uh, signal generator, sweep generator, sweeping between about 10 megahertz and uh, 1.4 gigahertz right now. And I have a uh, directional coupler. This is a KDI DCK 1010 directional coupler designed for 1 megahertz to 1000 megahertz. This is a 10 dB coupler, uh, normally for measuring uh, forward power. But by connecting it up backwards, we can we can measure the uh, reverse or the reflected power coming from our antenna. Um, this bottom cable right here is going to the spectrum analyzer. The spectrum analyzer right now is centered at 500 megahertz. This is our center right here with 100 megahertz per division. There's 10 divisions, so that's 500 megahertz, 400, 300, 200, 100. 600, 700, 800, 900, 1000. The response is 10 dB per div vertical division. Um, I have the uh, sweep generator set up so our worst case scenario, which is an open port, has approximately negative 20 dBm reflected power. You can see that as it sweeps across. I'm going to connect up a uh, 50 ohm load now. This is a SMA 50 ohm load. This will be our best case scenario, which is a perfectly matched antenna across all the frequencies. That should result in the minimum reflected power, as you can see now on the display. We have a really good match on the low frequencies and about uh, negative 50 on the high frequencies. But that means we have a 30 dB difference between the best and worst case scenarios for our antenna. We want to aim for the minimum reflected power, which is uh, what you're seeing on the screen right now. Again, that's our uh, worst case scenario, it's essentially an open port. I'm going to connect the uh, disco and antenna now. That's coming in from this cable off to the side here. We got a little bit of a FM broadcast interference, that's what that just popped up, that's okay. I'm going to increase the uh, sweep rate on the sweep generator so we can get a nice uh, turn on the max hold. Let that fill in for a bit. Uh, wherever these little valleys are, that's where the, the best matches for the frequency range. Again, that's 500 megahertz. We have about a 6 dB match, which, you know, I think that's like a 3 to 1 SWR. Uh, 10 dB match would be like a 2 to 1 SWR. So anything along this bottom line is a basically 2, two to 1 SWR. Um, that's 400 megahertz. So this is the UHF ham band right about here. This is 300 megahertz. That's 200 megahertz. We have a really good match in that range. Uh, 100 megahertz. As you can see, it's got a really good match in the FM broadcast uh, band. So if you want to ever use it for uh, pirate radio transmissions, uh, so so in the VHF uh, two meter band. And it's pretty poor response. You can see this little peak right here is the uh, w top resonator of the whip antenna. You can trim that for a really good response in the six meter band. Um, Going on to the high UHF stuff, with a 6, 7, 8, 900, 900 megahertz band right here. It actually has pretty good response on the microwave ranges. I was surprised at you know, what a 10 dB return loss we'd say. So um, it's not horrible. The uh, PL259 connector probably uh, is what is limiting the overall high frequency response. 
I can uh, just tune up to 800 megahertz here. I can get a sweep of the uh, microwave and the UHF stuff a little better. I'll let it fill in again. Are centered at uh, 800 megahertz right here. So that's 900 megahertz. 1 gigahertz. This will be the 900 megahertz ham band right in here. It has about a 10 dB uh, response. One, two, yeah, this is 1.3 right about here. So uh, the antenna does uh, work as uh, stated by Radio Shack. It's a pretty decent antenna. Um, I highly recommend them. Um, The really high stuff, the really low frequencies, and the really high frequencies are, of course, gonna uh, not be as good. But uh, for the uh, price and the convenience of just going on to Radio Shack and picking up your antenna, it's a really good deal. You can trim, you know, like like I said, the top resonator coil or the uh, and the cone elements too, if you really wanna tweak the antenna for a certain uh, frequency range, but uh, I centered it back to the 500 megahertz. It's still 100 megahertz per division. I can actually uh, I'll go down to the uh, VHF stuff. Centered at 300 megahertz. I changed it to 50 megahertz per division. So that's 300 megahertz, 200, 100. This is the top end of the FM broadcast band right here. It's got a really good response. This is your uh, two meter uh, amperage radio band right in, uh, in that area right there. And then uh, four, this is the UHF ham band. Not great, but it's usable. 